The Stormclaw is by far one of the most loved builds for Druid, but also was one of the weakest Druid builds in Season 4 in Diablo 4, and that was really frustrating. That will change with Season 5 now. The Stormclaw Druid will receive several major buffs, so it still won't be the best build, but it can become a really good speed farmer, because we are gonna have a lot of AoE now, and that's really important for the new Infernal Hordes mode, which you are fighting large amounts of enemies. First of all, the great stuff of the crown caught a complete rework and is really good stuff now. It will give you now basic ranks instead of only claw ranks, so it will also boost your storm strike and it will give you plus 2 to storm strike chains, which you can mastercraft up to plus 7 chains, so it will be really good in the infernal horde or just for speed farm in the pit 101 from mats. It will also get a huge damage to close enemies, fix boost, as also the implicit will change the damage to close enemies. So the crown stuff by itself a major buff for the storm cloud Raid. in addition the rune work has content aspect that's buffed so we can potentially build a lightning bolt build around it also some other buffs like hurricane's crest tdr and new fists of fate i recorded a storm cloud video before the season drop but didn't have time to release it earlier have mercy if there are some when season 5 star trades in there i will also try to build a storm cloud Raid on my own in the coming days and will give you an updated guide when i got every piece of gear together as i said the Stormclaw won't be the best build, but certainly one of the most fun ones. Could also synergize really well with the new and buffed Andal's Visage, so we could finally build a nice poison Andal's Visage build. Hey guys, what's up? Angle with another Diablo 4 Druid build guide for the Season 5. And today I want to show you my Stormclaw Season 5 Druid. That will be one hell of a fun build. After a quick introduction why you should definitely go for the Stormclaw Druid build, we will go into details now. Also, if you want to check out a really nice leveling build, you can also check out my recently released Earth Spike Druid build. The cool thing is, you can smoothly transition from the Earth Spike build into the Stormclaw build as soon as you will find your Stormclaw item. So, this is a really cool side note because, yeah, for the Stormclaw, you definitely need the Great Stuff of the Crown to get this build going. And before we jump into the chart planner please leave a like and a subscribe if you want to support my channel i would appreciate it a lot and also join me on twitch on tuesday and also on wednesday when i will start my journey into the season 5 stream all my social media channels are linked in the description so i would really happy if you come by and just say hi and have a nice chat with me but let's gonna start into the build i got one version with Baxter Rampage and one version with Nature's Fury and also one version that doesn't have any Uber Unix so you can pick any variant you want. And let's gonna start with the Baxter Rampage version into our skill tree. Because I don't have the Nature's Fury interactions on this kind of version, I try to utilize all of my lightning bolts I know. It is really underused, but with the new buff of our rune workers condo aspect, our lightning bolts will now get up to 40% more multiplicative damage. Maybe I will also go for the rune workers condo aspect in the emerald slot if our lightning bolts will get increased, and I will also put my tempers from my item on to the lightning bolt enchant because you can get under storm finders the lightning bolt damage i know it is really high experimental and i don't know if it will work but it sounds kind of cool because we can also get really high amount of plus lightning bolt damage through our paragon board and we're also gonna get lightning bolt on lucky hit on our skill tree and also thanks to the new fist of hate we're gonna get a really high amount of luck hit chance. So with our great graphics and mass working, we can get this maybe around 80, 90 or even 100%. And this fits perfectly into our playstyle because we're gonna get luck hit interaction with overcharge aspect. As I said, we're gonna get luck hit interaction with our skill tree and also our calm before the storm to trigger our cataclysm. So I will change this as soon as Mobilitics will introduce the Björn Fang Tusks as Ring. This was just a quick summary what defines it by the Rampage. So we don't go for the multiple element style, we just go for heavy lightning damage. So for our skill tree, we're gonna get our Claw Max as also Wild Claw. We also get Storm Strike Max and also our Fierce Storm Strike. And thanks to the new Crown stuff, we also can try to get chains to plus 7 targets so we gonna have multiple massive amount of IE damage this would be really wild 
And also, this would be really good with a storm psych when we scale our storm psych damage. And also, we're gonna hit all of them with the vulnerable effect. So, this is really cool. And for our defensive skills, we're gonna get one rank into Earthen Bulwark. It's also preserving Earthen Bulwark. Keep in mind, we don't have any of our symbiotic interactions, so we cannot reduce our cooldown with our aspect, but we can also reduce our cooldown with the new Hurricane's Crest that got some really crazy cooldown reduction. Now it got baseline of 20% cooldown reduction and we can get it even further. With 20% cooldown reduction, we can get it to around 30-40% with our Master Recruits and also with the Great Affix to like 50%. So this will help really a lot. So we're also going to have 4 points into Cycling Armor. It's a passive damage reduction. It's really nice. Also the Preserving Cycling Armor. It's also Blood Howl. And preserving blood hole for more attack speed. One point in the ancestral fortitude, so we can go for three points into vigilance, so we will get more damage reduction after we cast our defensive skill. And we don't have any skill points on our companion part and for our wrath part. Currently, I got hurricane with also the savage hurricane in because I don't know what I'm gonna do with my last slot. It is nice because we're gonna have an addition of 20% less. Damage deal, so it could be nice. Also, we're gonna get our Endless Tempest. I still need to switch off from Charger Atmosphere to Endless Tempest. With the new Mjolnir Ring, we're also gonna get two additional rings into Endless Tempest. And we could also potentially get another two rings into this. We're gonna have five rings, and this would be a duration of 25%. So maybe I will also switch some things around until Season 5 starts. So also check out my chart planner, and if you have any questions for this build or the skill tree or some other things, just ask them in the comments down below. And we're gonna get one point into elemental exposure, one point into charge atmosphere, three points into electric shock. This will give us a chance to immobilize enemies. When they immobilize, we're gonna get a huge damage bonus and also we're gonna have that open with the lucky chance with the chance to cast lightning bolts. As I said, we're gonna try to utilize and maximize the Damage output of our lightning bolts. I still don't know if this will work and if this is gonna do enough damage, but it could potentially work with the new Fists of Fate cloths. And we also got the standard cool texture of Neurotoxin, Toxic Loss, and also for the huge crit damage for Envenom. For old skills, we're gonna get Cataclysm as also the Pony, and also three points in the Defiance, three points into Quick Shift, and also three points in the Defensive Posure. And then we also gonna get. Bessel Rampage for our ultimate passive, so we're gonna get 50% more damage and also 30% attack speed. We are always gonna have the 30% attack speed, but keep in mind for Wrath skills, we have one point to elemental exposure, one point into endless tempest, three points to bad omen for the nice lucky chance to cast our lightning balls, and we're gonna get more damage because we're gonna boost our lightning balls, and also the potential chance gets increased to our fists of fate. And we're also gonna have three points in the electric shock for more lightning damage. And we also got a cool combi of neurotoxin, toxic law, so we're gonna get our enemies poison, and so we can get our Envenom critical strike damage multiplier. For our ultimate skills, we're gonna get two points in the defiance. We can also get a third point. You can uh, technically go for two points higher than senses, so we can get more points into defiance. You can also leave out the points in higher than senses and either go for hurricane and leave out the bulwark. This is also a potential option, or just go with the points in natural disaster. But for now, I will keep them in higher than senses, and we're also gonna get cataclysm and we. As I said, we get quick shift for more damage, defensive posture for more damage reduction when we are fortified. And we're also gonna get Bessel Rampage. We always have our 30% attack speed buff up by default, and we're also gonna get 50% multiplicative damage boost if we gonna go into our so we also get the 50% damage multiplier if we get to our weather form which we will get through our mall so this is also nice next up onto our items i also got a version without the unix without the ubers you just go for god's last ground and the aspect of concussive strikes but we're going to talk about the end game version now with harlequin's curse and tyrus might this is really self-explanatory it is really huge 
gives us huge cooldown reduction. Also, the Tyrus might get even more buffed. It gives us huge amounts of resistance. Also, damage reduction toll. As I said, if you don't have them, go for Godzilla's Crown. It got a slight change that you will get 6% more damage against elites. And also, aspect of concussive strike, so we can stun our enemies. And with the chest, just go for some maximum life, armor, and such things. So for our gloves, we're gonna go with the new buff Fist of Fate. Because it will give us up to 50% luck hit chance. And we can get this to even 80 to 90% as I said. And we also can do more damage so it will be really nice for our luck hit effects like overcharge and some other things. And for your pants, go for skinwalkers aspect because we're constantly in shape-shifting mood we are gonna get so much life every time for your boots go for the wild heart hunger you still have problems when you're stunned because you're not unstoppable through other bulwark you can also go for aspect of metamorphosis but if you're fine with your stuns and cc you will definitely go for wild heart hunger because really good now in the new season and it will boost the damage and also your damage reduction really far and for your weapon, Grace of the Crown, I think this is self-explanatory. And right now I got the Runeworkers Conduit aspect on the ring, the aspect of Moonrise, and on my second ring, the Overcharge aspect. I am still thinking about changing some things around, but right now this is my setup for it. And for your games, go for Topaz, Ruby, and the Diamond. Topaz for weapon, Ruby for armor, and Diamond for jewelry. For your gear, I will fill up the slots with some FX if you don't have the unix equivalent yet and you can also write down in the comments below if you have any further questions for your pants go for ranks of storm strike ranks to claw armor then utility like hit to beast the enemies also defense for maximum life for your boots wild heart hunger weapon the grades of the crown for your amulet go for critical strike chance ranks to venom and attack speed you can also Go for quick shift instead of critical strike chance, so we will be fine. For our offensive temper, go for werewolf attack speed. If you don't have the cap of close enemies yet, just go for your close enemies damage source. And for our mobility, go for bonus to digital gate, so we get even more movement speed. What effects on your ring slots? Just get the attack speed, crit chance, and max life. Also, werewolf attack speed or damage to close enemies, as I said, if you don't have. The cap of your thunder socket and also it instead of hurricane cooler reduction you can also get cataclysm cooler reduction because we have really high amounts of lucky hit chance for spirit boons we gonna go for varonis for the juice damage from elites then for our eagle we gonna go with iron feathers also even wrath for our spirit bonding for the wolf we gonna go for calamity so our cataclysm will do more damage and longer damage and also we for the snake we're gonna go for calm before the storm so we have a chance to reset our cataclysm so we have it up in time and for paragon board it's really simple we have the electrocution cleave so our lightning balls will do even more damage it's like up to 600 percent the fang and claw for more damage while we're in werewolf form the territorial for more damage to close enemies as also for the boost or thunder side node this build for more critical strike damage the earth and sky for more damage to crowd control or nature magic damage and the keeper for more damage to our storm strike because it is lightning and we're gonna start with the first board we have electrocution the first board and we also maximize our potential willpower nodes as i said this is a kind of experimental choice with the lightning bolt damage and you can also go for lightning bolt damage instead of travel with attack speed first second board go your way up to here then take the thunder sack node as also your fang and claw glyph then for the next board go for the constricting tendrils so we get nice chunks of maximum life also some nature's will lightning damage also keeper cleave for more lightning damage then for your next board go with the high demelis for more damage against poison enemies also many interaction with reduction to poison enemies and also we're gonna get the earth and sky cleave in here and for the second last board go for the spirit cleave 
in the Ancestor Guidance board as also the basic skill damage and for your last board go for the inner piece as also your territorial cleave. I will also update this char plan as I will try this build out. And you can also check out and nature's fury build in my char planner. I just switch the seismic shift aspect in and I also skilled the earth spike now and change some things with some skills for our earth and our storm skills. I also got the symbiotic aspect in here and for my paragon board I also got the earth and devastation in so this just changed for my nature's view. You can decide which you want to play more and with the storm claw nature's fury we won't go for the lightning bolt so this is not that much experiment so i hope i could show a really nice build that will potentially and hopefully go really well in the new season also write down in the comments below if you have any further questions and also please leave a like and a subscribe it would boost my channel tremendously and i would appreciate it a lot also feel free to follow me on twitch so we can play together when I'm streaming in the new season 5. Until the next video, bye!